Welcome to Yan Can Cook. Let me tell you a secret. Chinese food tastes just as good outdoor as indoor. There are many wonderful dishes that you can take to a picnic. This all my stuff for picnic in this Chinese picnic basket. I'm gonna put this down and also like this one, a Chinese frying saucer. <laughs> I use this to hold all my sauces. My goodness. <laughs> Dr. Ginsburg, my neighbor, is not gonna like it. For all the picnic dishes I'm gonna do, the first thing I wanna show you is this Cantonese barbecue pork. You can do barbecue pork, barbecue duck, barbecue pork rib. You can do barbecue short rib. It doesn't make any difference. First, we decided finally, we decided to do barbecue pork because right before the show, I asked everybody in the studio audience that, where do you like pork or pork rib? And everybody say, pork. How many of you like pork? How many of you like bony rib? <laughs> See? <laughs> That's why I decided this is pork instead of pork rib. If you don't like it at home, we got a problem. <laughs> but anyway, in this particular dish, we are going to show you how easy it is to make Cantonese barbecue pork at home. Here, I have about one and a half to two pounds of pork shoulder. The reason why I use pork shoulder is some marbling here. And then you have to marinate this overnight, at least four to six hours. With this marinade, I want to show you this. This is one and a quarter of a cup of soy sauce, three tablespoons of dry sherry, and two and a half tablespoons to three tablespoons of ketchup, and also approximately two to two and a half tablespoons of hoisin sauce. And also, use a tiny bit of minced garlic and ginger, about two teaspoons of each. Chop them all and mince it. And also about half a teaspoon to three teaspoons of five spice powder. And then also use a touch of salt or sugar if you want, but it's not necessary because there's enough soy sauce and hoisin sauce there. And then you marinate it in this gigantic bowl here. I'm gonna set this aside and see. We're gonna marinate this over here. Okay, you should marinate it overnight. Marinate it, and after you marinate it, you cut this into three pieces, okay? This is, have been marinated overnight. If you have a lot of time, you can marinate it for 30 days, <laughs> but you shouldn't. See, this is nice and long. We're gonna take this out, and we're gonna cut this up, okay? We'll cut this up. One cut over here. Ooh, how beautiful. What a mess. <laughs> and then take this out. And then cut this up. So you will have three big pieces. Okay. Wow. I'm not going to touch this again. First of all, you got to be very, very good. As you go along, you should clean up. See, perfectly look. Nice and clean. And then you put this over here. Put this, one piece, two pieces, and three pieces. And what are you gonna do with the last piece? I'm gonna send it to my neighbor, Dr. Ginsburg. <laughs> and then we are gonna take it. Now, in order to do it well, you should left, use leftover of these marinade occasionally, base it a little bit, very important, okay? But first of all, I'm gonna take this over there and we are going to bake it at 375 degree. Put it over here. And then, it is so efficient. It is all done. <laughs> Look at this. Three pieces. Of course, when you do it at home, you should do six pieces because you can easily keep it and you do not have to worry about it uh, at all. Now, I'm gonna use another knife because it's very, very hot. It is so hot, I couldn't take it anymore. Wow! <laughs> this is unbelievable. And then, when you do it, after you cut it up, whew, hot. 
Now, pork is very important in a picnic. Can you imagine? You go to a picnic without a pig? <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Cut it up. Cut it up. <gasps> wow, tough to make a living. Put it over here. Cut it up and cut it up. And I want to show you many ways of serving this. Now, you go to a Chinese restaurant, you can actually buy this in a Chinese restaurant or Chinese deli. Or you can easily make it, like what I just showed you. And you can serve it by itself, like him, okay? Slice it. Or you can serve it by putting into a things like mandarin pancake, roll it up, put in a tiny piece of Chinese steamed bun, like this. Look at this, how wonderful. See this? Or you can put it into a sesame seed bun, like this. Look at this. Isn't it nice, wonderful? This is how you serve it. We're going to put this away, so this way, everybody... Wow, this happened again in Dr. Ginsburg's house. Gloom. <laughs> we'll set this aside, so this way, everybody can see. Now, the important thing is, Aside from barbecue pot, which you can prepare way ahead of time, you can also make something really wonderful. I call this cold <coughs> watercress salad with a five flavor dressing. First of all, I'm gonna heat up this little pan, okay, because we're gonna make the dressing. And then I quickly parboil, this is approximately four cups of bean sprout and four bunch of these watercress, and I parboil this in boiling water with about two to one table, two teaspoon to one tablespoon of salt. This way, I squeeze all the water out. You see this? It's nice strainer. I squeeze the water out, and I'm gonna form this into a mold. In, why I'm forming to a mold? I'm gonna make the dressing. You see, the dressing is very easy to make. I have all the seasoning here, so everybody can see the dressing. Two tablespoon of oil. Let me get the oil. Okay, heat up this little saucepan. Two teaspoon, up to a tablespoon of oil. You can use two tablespoon of oil. And then use a tiny, tiny bit of crushed pepper and also some garlic and ginger. Look at this, we use a tiny bit of garlic and a tiny bit of ginger. Chop this up. nothing to it. And then you put it over here and chop them all up. Put approximately one to two teaspoon of sesame seed oil and some salt and sugar. Make a little dressing. And then put some cooking wine. Wow, look at this. Ooh, isn't that wonderful? Explosion technique. Don't do it at home. And then when it's done, you can slightly thicken this up and set this aside with all this seasoning. Look at this. I want to show you how easy it is. First, you take this out. It's very easy to do. You put it over here. Well, this is already cooked. You can cook this ahead of time. Push this around. Put more in. Depends on how many people you have. This is make about four servings. You push this and you go, what the heck? Stick around. A mound. Okay, and then you use the cooked bean sprout. Press it very, very tight, okay? Then you say, what the heck? <laughs> you see? So easy. Let's remove these. And then you can garnish this, the green thing with the green. The also, use a tiny bit of tomato and slice this up and garnish this. Look at this, how easy. This one for the green, isn't it nice? This one also for the green. And this one for the bean sprout. How easy it is to garnish a dish. Look at this, 
you put, slice it up, put it over here. Then all you have to do is put the dressing right on top, right on top. It's very easy to do. Look at how wonderful those nice salad and the barbecue pork. Now, next one I want to show you is something even more interesting. We're going to make what I call this Chinese onion, green onion pancake. Or you can use, call Chinese onion pancake. You can use onion or green onion. Or you can even put a tiny bit of parsley, cilantro. All you need is very simple. Here, I have about one and a half cup of flour, okay? Three eggs, see this? Time to two to three whole onion thinly sliced. And then also have all kind of stuff. <laughs> I have salt here, let me show you. I have about half a teaspoon of white pepper and about one to two teaspoon of salt, one to, te one to te two teaspoon of sugar, okay? I'll put them all over here, mix them all up, okay? Put it in this big bowl, okay? And then also mix it up with a tiny bit of green onion. Makes it easier when you do it like this first. And then put a tiny bit of water. I use approximately three quarter cup of water. Mix it in, mix it in. Make it into a nice smooth batter. This is a special batter. And trust me, you can't miss. This better bets a thousand. <laughs> Move them around, put them all together. Now, the important thing is make sure you got a nice, good consistency. In the meantime, we are going to heat up our little frying pan. Look at this. And then put a tiny bit more water. Put a tiny bit more water. Otherwise, the darn thing won't come out. <laughs> also, more egg. Now make sure you do not whip it too much. Otherwise, it will be too glutinous. And will bring out the gluten. It will be too tough. Okay? So very, very important. The good thing about this is, it is very easy to make. It's very, very nice for a snack. It's great to pick to a picnic. I don't know how many of you have ever tried the traditional Chinese style onion pancake. Anybody have ever tried any? Two out of 600 people. <laughs> wow, very exciting. Okay, okay, when this is done, let's make sure I have enough water here so I won't get stuck. Otherwise, you're gonna have stuck green onion pancake. This is a Chinese bitter. <laughs> this is how you exercise. Okay, this is perfect. When it's done, you also put a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. Give that nice flavor, okay? And then, we are gonna put a tiny bit of oil. Let's remove these. Put a tiny bit of oil over here. And then we're gonna make this pancake. All you have to do is use approximately this much. Approximately half a cup, okay? Do not use too much. If you use too much, you have gigantic pancake. It's kind of hard to handle. Why I'm making this pancake? Oh, you can see, that thing is moving. While you're making the pancake, I'm going to show you something very interesting. When we say we are in a pickle, it doesn't mean that we are in trouble. Pickling in China has a long history and tradition. So I'm going to show you how the Chinese make the pickle, okay? Here, you can start with carrot, oriental daikon, which is chi Chinese white turnip, ginger, nice, hot, fiery red chili pepper, and also broccoli, and or you can use broccoli or cauliflower and cucumber. And then I come back and make sure the done thing, <laughs> wow, look at this, otherwise you're gonna have burn frisbee pancake. 
Okay, turn around. Please come. It's not coming. No problem at all. You see, nice pen tip like this, and two and very, very low. Very, very low. This is gherkin. You can use cucumber and I cut into by row cutting technique like this. Row cutting technique. You turn it a quarter of a turn, quarter of a turn, quarter of a turn. Set it aside, okay? Here, I'm gonna burn, bring approximately <laughs> one half of a cup. Wow, done. <laughs> Here, I have in this particular brine water, I have one and a half tablespoon of salt and about two teaspoon of Sichuan pickle, a Sichuan peppercorn, those nice, nice flavorful Sichuan peppercorn, and also four whole chili pepper. And dissolve it, also put a tiny bit of wine. And then I am gonna put this, all this vegetable into this boiling liquid. Okay, look at this, colorful. It depends on how many you're making. I would use approximately four cup of each vegetable and then put all this boiling liquid right here. Ooh, look at this. Okay, let's set this aside. And then also mix them all up, mix them all up. And then we're gonna use, since this is no ordinary pickle, so we're not gonna use ordinary jar. We're gonna use this Dragon Kuhn pottery. Look at how beautiful this is. Oh, it isn't wonderful. This is a cooking canister. The Chinese use this to cook chicken. See, the double boil. You see this? It looks like this, okay? And this is a little simmering jar, simmering pot. It looks like this. See this? They have come different size. This is a, what they call double hot hot and cold surfer. Looks like this, and have another one. And then you can turn it upside down, and you can turn it down, you can turn it upside down, or moving around, and then you can do it like this. And this is our pickling jar, look at this. Wonderful. You put all of these stuff right in here. Look at this. And then you seal this with water. Put them all in here. The idea of doing this is, I don't know how many of you know that pickling has been in China, in existence in China for many, many thousands of years. Dates back to about a thousand years to the Tang Dynasty. It started out in Shantou, Guangdong Province. They are fired, this pottery, are fired in this little dragon kiln, different chambers. And the chambers of this kiln looks like a dragon. That's why they call dragon kiln potteries. And as I said, since it's no ordinary pickle, that's why we use this gorgeous looking jar. Now, to make it wonderful, you fill it up with about three cups of water, and then you cover this whole thing up. And then you fill water over here. Let's see the water. What I'm doing is give a vacuum seal so no oxygen can get in. Then we let it sit for 24 hours up to two months. Then anytime you want to have wonderful pickle, then you just open this wonderful pickling jar. Now, we come back to our pancake. I want to show you how wonderful you can serve your pancake. Isn't it beautiful? This is our pancake, the nice looking one. We put it on top to serve with these wonderful dishes. Look how beautiful. <laughs> the pancake tastes so good, I have two of it myself. Now, next one, I'm gonna show you how to make seaweed rice roll. People wonder, is sushi Japanese cuisine? The truth is the Chinese has been making something similar to sushi 3,000 years ago. I call this Chinese sushi or seaweed rice roll. It's very easy to do. Here you start with the seaweed. This Japanese is sushi seaweed. It looks like this, see? All you have to do is cut the darn thing up in half, like this, because I couldn't find my scissors, so I cut everything up with my knife. 
And then you turn on your oven, you get the seaweed ready. Because what you're doing is you kind of roast this a little bit, like this. Don't get too close, otherwise you're gonna have burnt charcoal seaweed, okay? <laughs> Basically, to bring out the flavor, okay? Move them around, move them around, set it aside, move them around, move them around, set it aside. Now, we're ready. This is Chinese seaweed. Look, this is round like this. Just like a frisbee, like this. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll get it back later. And then I want to show you how easy it is to do this. Now, here, I have some Chinese sausage. I'm going to slice this up. Once again, this is steam already cooked. I cut it up into julienne pieces, set it aside. I also have a couple piece of avocado, okay? Avocado. And also a couple piece of prawn, cooked shrimp. The first thing you do is you got to season your medium grain cooked rice. This is approximately two cup. I use a tiny, tiny bit of hot mustard, okay? Once again, stuff that you can smoke your hair. And then a tiny, tiny bit of rice vinegar, Chinese rice vinegar, and also use about one tablespoon of soy sauce. I use about two teaspoons of vinegar. And then mix them all up. So this is already seasoned, already wonderful, okay? And then you hold on to this and you put this over here. Okay, look at this. Put it over here. It depends on how big a rice roll you're gonna make. Now, and then you put a tiny bit of Chinese lap chung, avocado. Look at this, beautiful. And if you want, you can even use a tiny bit of cucumber slices. You can use ham too. I julienne this, set it aside. When you have time to do it, you can do it a lot slower. If you don't have time to do it, you can do it as fast as I do. And then set it aside, put a tiny bit of chive, look at this, and put a tiny bit of parsley. And then you can roll the darn thing up like this. Roll the darn thing up, roll it up, roll it up, roll it up, and roll it up. Can you see how beautiful? And then you stuck a little piece of prawn. If you like it, you can have two pieces. Who cares? See how beautiful? It is so easy to do. I'm gonna set this aside and put it right over here. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you something even more exciting. I'm gonna show you how to do what the Chinese call the steam sponge cake. Let's move these away. This is steam sponge cake is very, very easy to do. You start it out with flour. One and a half cup of unsifted flour. Mix it with a tiny, tiny bit of, we're gonna have six eggs, okay? We're gonna mix all these up. Use approximately one teaspoon of lemon peel, zest, some lemon extract, and also a tiny bit of vanilla extract, about a teaspoon or less. Mix them all up. And then put it over this whip, egg white, okay? Put a tiny bit over here, mix them all up. You can do it all together, but you can do it separately. Do the egg white and the egg yolk separately. And then mix it up. Look at this. And you steam it. The idea of doing this is just like think of this as steam, treat the sponge cake to a steam bath. <laughs> you remember, when you are doing steaming, you can do it, look at this, beautiful. Fold it very, very carefully. Very, very carefully. Don't want to get rid of the air bubble. When it's done, you pull this in right over here, and then you steam it in a bamboo steamer, okay? Look at this, beautiful. And then, right before you steam, sprinkle a tiny bit of black sesame seed like this, and then you steam it, just as I said, when you steam it, make sure you steam it with the vapor, which is high heat. When it's done, it will look like this, beautiful. And then you can use a knife to cut this up, cut this up, 
Look at this. And then you can open this up. The whole thing comes out. And then you can cut it up and you can garnish it and make it look beautiful like this. Now, you see how we have all these wonderful dishes for the picnic today. And I'll see you on the picnic. If Yan can go to the picnic, so can you. Join me. <laughs>